Uh, so uh, a star's life is determined by the competition between two forces. Uh, so stars, uh, lifetime and evolution uh, is determined by two forces. One is gravity, which has the tendency to hold the star together. Uh, and now the thing about gravity is uh, it ought to work. Uh, the, the stars have no solid surface. So uh, if you can imagine gravity pulling on an atom on the surface of the star, why should that atom just fall all the way down to the bottom of the star? Uh, because there's no solid surface to prevent it from doing so. Uh, and the answer is that gravity isn't the only force operating. There's also pressure. So there's gravity, uh, which pulls stuff in, and pressure, which has the tendency to push out. And these things balance in most stars. In the sun, for example, these two forces are in balance at all points in the sun. And this uh, balance goes by the technical name uh, hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, hydro, because it's a fluid, it's not a solid surface. Static, nothing's moving, and equilibrium is just balance. And uh, to be a little more precise, the way this works, here's the, here's the surface of some star. Uh, here's some point within the star. And there are two kinds of forces acting on this point. There's uh, gravity, which is pulling the thing toward the center of the star. And then there's pressure forces uh, in two different ways. Uh, the outer regions of the star exert a pressure inward. So there's an inward pressure. And the inner regions of the star exert a pressure outward. Uh, and uh, the outward pressure has to be greater than the inward pressure by exactly the right amount to counteract gravity. So it basically looks like P out minus P in is equal to gravity. And this holds true at all points. Now, in order, uh, it's the other way around, right? Thank you. P in minus P out. Yeah. Right. P in minus P out has to equal gravity. And that requires that the pressure on the inside has to be bigger than the pressure on the outside, because you don't have negative gravity, uh, at least not until the third part of this course. Uh, but at the moment, you don't have any negative gravity. And so uh, uh, the pressure on the inside has to be greater than the pressure on the outside. OK, so what is pressure? Uh, cast your mind back to high school chemistry. Remember high school chemistry? It uh, doesn't matter if you don't. I'll tell you everything you need to know. There's something called an ideal gas. And uh, there's something that the ideal gas does, which is to exert gas pressure. Uh, your high school chemistry teacher probably wrote down something that looks like this. PV equals nRT. Uh, and uh, here's the thing about, about this. V is volume in this case. P is the pressure. N is the uh, number of particles per volume. And so the key thing here is that uh, N divided by V is equal to the density, basically, times a constant. Because remember, uh, uh, density is uh, mass per volume. If you take the number of particles and you multiply by the mass of each particle, that'll give you the total amount of mass in a given region. You divide by the volume, that equals the density. And so this also is a constant, this R thing. And so what you get is P is equal to a constant times the density times the temperature. So this is how physicists think of the uh, ideal gas law, because we prefer uh, to work in terms of the density. OK, so here's, here's the pressure. And the pressure on the inside had better be bigger than the pressure on the outside, or this isn't going to balance, which means either the density or the temperature or both had better be larger in the middle of the star than it is in the outer parts of the star. So inside of the star, the T and or the rho has to be bigger than it is on the outside. Now it turns out 
that if you just keep the temperature constant all the way through the star, you never achieve this balance. Uh, so if only the density varies, then inner regions do have uh, higher pressure. But the increase in density also increases the force of gravity, because gravity is dependent on how much mass there is. And if you increase the density, you also increase the amount of mass. Uh, so you have higher pressure, but you also have higher gravity. And it turns out uh, that you can prove, mathematically speaking, that uh, uh, no balance is possible, because it always ends up being the case uh, for gas pressure, that the amount you have to increase the density by, if you're only increasing the density, uh, will also increase the gravity and you'll never get it balanced. So the consequence of that is that the inner parts of a star must be hotter than the outer parts. Otherwise, the star wouldn't exist. It would collapse. And this is true. The inside of the sun turns out to be something like 10 to the 7 degrees. The surface of the sun uh, turns out to be something like 6 times 10 to the 3 degrees. So yes, indeed, the inside very much hotter than the sun, uh, th very much hotter than the outside in the sun, and that's what keeps the sun in balance. And there's a problem with this, uh, and the problem is, that there, there's uh, something called thermodynamics. And one of the laws of thermodynamics is that heat tends to flow from places where it's hot to places where it's cool. Uh, this is evident uh, in everyday life. If you take a little piece of, I don't know, molten lead or something, and you drop it in a bucket of water, the heat from the lead will spread into the water. The water will increase in temperature very slightly. The heat will uh, come out of that piece of lead. The lead will solidify, uh, and uh, uh, everything will come into a kind of temperature balance. Similarly, if you put a snowball in uh, some hot place, it'll melt. Why? Because the heat from, uh, from around it will go into the snowball. Uh, the temperatures will uh, try and equalize each other, and they'll, uh, it'll come out even. So this uh, law of thermodynamics is why the snowball has no chance in hell. Uh, and uh, so this is happens in stars, too, right? Uh, so the heat in the center of the star flows out. And when it gets to the surface, it's radiated. At the surface, it radiates. Uh, and that's the energy that we see coming from the star, is this heat that was in the center. It's gotten to the surface. It's now radiating away out into the cold depths of space. And, and, and that's what we see. But that means that the temperature in the center of the star, which is holding the star up, decreases. And then the star wouldn't hold itself up. So you require, in order for the star to hold itself out, an energy source at the center of the star. And this does two things. It, it, it replaces all that lost heat, uh, and it preserves the equilibrium of the star so it doesn't collapse. OK, so this is all pretty abstract. Uh, and it was known that this had to be true before they figured out what the energy source was. Uh, it was known for uh, people just sort of thinking in very general terms about how the sun could exist, uh, understood that there had to be some kind of large source of energy down in the middle of the star. And notice it has to be in the middle of the star. It does no good for the energy to be, cre be created all the way through the star, because if it's created all the way through the star, uh, then uh, the temperature is distributed throughout the star, and you don't get a situation where it's much hotter in the middle than it is on the outside. So everybody uh, knew for uh, quite a while that there was energy being created in the center of the star. They just didn't understand how that was done. Uh, and then when people invented nuclear physics uh, in the 1930s and 40s and 50s, it was understood that this comes from nuclear reactions, uh, nuclear fusion in particular. In the case of the sun, it's the fusion of hydrogen 
uh, atoms together to make helium that does this, and that releases energy in the same way that uh, a nuclear bomb does. The problem with this is that eventually you run out of hydrogen, or whatever your nuclear fuel is, because you've got only a limited amount of it in any one star. So eventually, the nuclear fuel runs out. And then the star has many adventures uh, before it settles down. And uh, for these, I will have to refer you either to a textbook or to some other course, because I'm not going to take you through the whole uh, 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 exciting life of a star once its nuclear fuel is exhausted. Suffice it to say that you know in advance what the outcome has to be, because there's no way it can hold itself up in the long run, because it doesn't have an energy source down at the center of the star. Uh, so uh, the consequence of this has to be that the star collapses. <coughs> 